<laughs> very sorry again i mean we just have uh, a problem with the electricity the electricity just cut off now and i just switched to use my phone now and i hope uh, everyone can still see me right yes and get back to uh, the question from the previous stage about uh, uh, where or yeah, I think about the uh, grey-headed parakeet or okay, so I hope probably I need to see the uh, the question again as well I'm sorry, I just lost it now hmm, lightning everywhere okay the electricity just come back <laughs> it is very very funny again <clears throat> so i think uh, the mask fin food it anyway still a very very uh, a rare bird in, in in cambodia too since the species however is very uh, shy <clears throat> and uh, only in the rainy season, it seems like uh, the good chance to find the birds that come and go along in the in the stream. Yeah, in the northern plain of the country. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chiasai. Yeah, I'm so glad. And there were stories about the previous uh, connection. There was like, you know lightning and thunder so i thought the electricity electric city will probably cut off somewhere hmm? mm -hmm. yeah uh what is the biggest threat to the cambodian bird Wow, hmm. I think uh, this is one of the very uh, good questions as well. Yeah, so so far, I think uh, the, 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 the problem is most of the, 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 the bird species, they are living inside the, the forest. And a part of uh, the deforestation and also the poverty and so as the recently the COVID-19 situation that the uh, government, you know, <coughs> worker that were laid out from the city and they went to their provinces and, and you know, catch up with some of the information and the bad news from uh, the protected area where we found some cases of the wildlife especially as we can see on the international news and the press about the, 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 the kill of the three giant ibis because of the, uh, you know, like some kind of uh, the, the, the carbon forum that they used to poison inside the Japan. And mainly they, they do it in order to, to catch the, uh, the animal or the other birds, but unluckily, we also found our three giant ibis, which is the very, very rare bird who killed and in that area. And of course, there, I mean, with all of those, at this time as well, I mean, this is like a very big uh, case that was just happened and we saw uh, inside the Praetor Ramsar site. Yeah, the Praetor Ramsar site in, in Tunle Sap area, which is also one of the uh, the the, the biggest breeding area in Southeast Asia for most of the large water birds. And there, there was a case of the poacher went into the Ramsar side protected area to collect and kill more than hundreds of uh, the, the chicks of the painted stalk. And this kind of thing can also be, you know, harm to other water bird that, that nesting nearby, so as the milky stalk as well. Hello, uh, yeah. <coughs> Yes, yeah, of course, like a food and climate, of course. 
Hello, Jules Fuper. Hello, Saimao. Hello, hello, everyone. <coughs> Hi, George. <laughs> ah, that's a nice question. Uh, glad you are able to get back. And what what the hardest bird to you and why? Okay. Hmm. I think uh, this is a, another nice question again. It depends, you know, like from the beginning when I when I started to be uh, a bird guy in some Vietnam center, I realized that <laughs> Peter was very frustrated to me, and my my bad experience from more than the past ten years when I watched the bad belly Peters inside Seima Valley Sanctuary at the time with my team. I remember I, could, I got one leech that came to my eye right here and I tried to be quiet because the bird just kind of coming around and move around everybody and I needed to wait until my colleagues, you know, see all, all, uh, see all together, like to see the bird all together. Then I told him that I just got the leech in my eye. Right, and I think George, uh, beside Peter, Mm, most of the ground bird and you know like the uh, the, the partridge sometimes it, it, it can be uh, really lucky because most of the place that you can see those birds it's not really easy which means you need to go into the rainforest or the evergreen forest that has you know the very dense uh, vegetation and somehow the light sometimes is really really bad as well so to see that bird you know is like <laughs> Yeah, something blah blah blah. I mean, not really, really easy. But when you see that bird, you know, when you bring your client or when you bring, you know, the tourists, and then you can manage to find those birds in in the forest, it's really a great thing to do. And that says like that's a a, a bonus. Yes, and uh, uh, yes, actually, yeah. Sorry, I mean the it's really bad about the electric city. Chúng điệp xua bong sát thai, chúng điệp xua nẹt ngọc nè, đón tiền. Okay. <laughs> well. Actually, uh, regarding to that point, I mean, the poacher placed the carboforan-based poison, which are particularly lethal to birds in the tropang, and collect, you know, mainly those birds for, for their needs. And I think uh, other victims of spike in the poaching site at the time are uh, wiving duck and also the saurus crane too, yeah. Uh, okay, so today, bong uh, sitan, how many, bong sitan, some to, how many uh, endemic species in Cambodia? Well, if you are talking about the resident species in Cambodia, which is like, uh, it, sorry, I mean endemic. <laughs> I was confusing to the critically endangered. Yeah, at the moment we have two. Two bird. One is small and one is the medium size bird. One is very easy to find. I'm sorry now the electric city is cut off again, but luckily I used the phone. Of course, yeah. Maybe you know uh, chap chap dead or in in Khmer language, right? And Cambodian tailor bird. It is one of the uh, the species that that was found in 2009 and described. In 2013, as the new, 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 new West species to the science, and it is endemic to the to the country. And you can 
also find that beautiful species which is not very far from Phnom Penh vicinity. And another another endemic species of bird in, in Cambodia, and that one you need to climb because the species live uh, in the cardamom. And I think I would recommend uh, Phnom Aural, which is one of the highest hill in, in Cambodia with the elevation uh, about uh, uh, 1813 meters above the sea level. And that place is the, the nice location for the uh, Cambodian laughing thrush. So we have Cambodian tailor bird, Jap Tet Kampuchea, and we also have uh, Cambodian laughing thrush that is also known as uh, Chow Wok Kampuchea. But Phnom Aral, not at all. It is one of the very, very best locations for birding among all the birds around the world and also Cambodia. And I also recommend you to spend at least two to three nights because beside the uh, Cambodian laughing thrush, there are some species which is nearly endemic, such as the chestnut headed partridge and uh, the, 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 the blue, the, the white tailed blue robin or you can call it Cambodian blue robin and also we can see the Cambodian flower pecker or fire breasted flower pecker and plus many many superb bird species Gachor, yeah, large snow tower, broad bill, Indo Chinese green magpie and blah blah blah. Yeah. អរគុណបងសិទ្ធានសំបងសំទោសបងសិទ្ធាសម្រាប់សំនួរអំពីអឺអ៊ែនដេមិកកម្ពុជាបឺស្ពេស៊ីសសូរទៅខ្ញុំ
you know, like reserved area, which is about an hour and a half from Siem Reap, but we, we need to go by the four wheel drive. And that place from, you know, like December or in January, when the solar screen, they uh, finished the breeding season in the northern part of the country, the, some of the population would uh, separate, you know, to visit some certain site where they used to be, such as in Kampo province or somewhere around the grassland of Tonlisap. And another majority population, they, they spend their time at uh, <coughs> Antropenet Mall, yeah, which is in Bante Minjai province. And usually we, we, we will see, you know, the solar screen, which is <coughs> around, you know, 10, 20, up to two or 300 sometimes. And Antropenet Mall also combined with, you know, very nice habitat of <coughs> the dry Diptorokar forest which is, you know, allowed you to see more species of uh, the, the dry forest species birds. And not at all. I mean, if you're really lucky, I think you can get four species of the owls. Yeah, maybe you can note like spotted wood owl, common barn owl, and uh, Asian bat owlet, and another species is spotted owlet. Probably black-headed woodpecker too, because last time, yeah, I mean, when I, I was with my clients, I saw a few uh, uh, woodpecker, like great common flameback and also the black-headed woodpecker. So another nice location I would say is the, uh, you can try Pei Toa. Maybe many, many birds from all around the world before they come to Cambodia, they do their own searching in the internet and any source bird report. And Praetor is one of the most famous area in South Asia where you will see the big water bird. And it is one of the biggest breeding colony in South Asia where you can see the endangered milky stalk and the endangered uh, greater adjutants. Because in the dry season, mainly from the, the late of December, like in January as well, they, the bird went to, uh, sorry, I mean, they go to the area and making the whole area full of uh, birds and other party because they all breed in that area. And, and, and then Prague Tall, not very far, we could spend totally around two and a half hours by car and boats to get into the, uh, the, the, the core area, which is inside the birding colony and inside the Ramsar site as well. <laughs> Maybe you can see thousands, thousands of uh, spot billed pelicans in one day. So spot billed pelicans during the dry season are the most like, easy time, you know, for, for, for bird or for any bird lover to, to find them. Yeah. Hello, uh, friend, friend from <coughs> everywhere. Bong bong mau pi kang please. <laughs> so stay, uh, hello, Mr. Kung San Rana, want to see owl. Of course, come to SVC, we will take you to see uh, the owl. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there are so many owl, more than 10 species of owl that you need to see in Cambodia. And I think uh, I really love spotted wood owl and uh, uh, brown wood owl. They're very shy, brown wood owl, always in the bush. <laughs> so stay, uh, Bong Sophia. So stay. Hello, Mr. Sophia. Hello, hello, Mr. Hart. Yep. Mr. Ninglin, hello. <laughs> well, uh, 
Mr. TSI, where is your most interested birding location in Cambodia that you haven't visited yet? I think uh, most of the birding location in Cambodia, let's say, yeah, I mean a few locations that I never been visiting yet. It is the National Park of Virat Jai. And I really want to go there one time, but since that place is very far, and you know, we don't really have much time uh, to go to that area. And I think you also know about uh, Kok Kapi in Kok Kong province. I think that is a very nice location. I, I could remember. Is a, is, I'm not correct, just correct me. I mean, is it in 2008 that we did some survey, bird survey, and someone has recorded the Spoonbill and Piper. So Kokkapi is a very nice place so far, as I was told by my birding friends and my birding mates, you know, from different organization and department. They say that uh, the place is very, very good to see, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the weather. Mr. Panyabot, I'm sorry, but my teach <laughs> Yeah, if uh, my, I'm sorry, I mean, apology for my poor pronunciation since it is the... Oh, hi, Luke! Hi, Madi, is there one species of bird that you really want to see in Cambodia but not had the chance yet? <laughs> well, Mr. Panyavut, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, which one? <laughs> I think uh, something that I would really wanted to see because like 10 years ago, I mean, let's say I have seen all the critically endangered species plus the free gate birds, but sorry, that one I have not seen, I'm, I'm not, I have not seen in Cambodia, but I saw that in another country. So I have seen the giant ibis, I have seen the white shoulder ibis, I have seen the three species of the vultures, and I have seen uh, Bengal florican, and those are the, the very rare birds. But in Saima, in 2010, I remember, 2010 is about 10 years ago from now, uh, some of my colleagues, he have seen, he had seen the orange niche partridge. I'm sure that that species can be seen in somewhere else. But since to me, I am a birder and I'm also a bird guy, I really want to see that bird in Cambodia. So we went to the Seima. I could hear that bird once only. And right now, I never ever seen or heard from that bird. Unlike some of my colleagues they have seen before, which means they are so lucky. So I would say that orange niche partridge. Is my wanted if I have a chance next time to the SEMA or any other uh, bird survey in SEMA, I would like to join. Yeah. Suasday Hong, how are you? So goodbye. Ah, hey, young the Kang SEMA, the Kang Dong Kalam, my guys, the Kang Pimin Pling Thet Chan Hai No. Right now, everybody, we had some rain. The rain is coming all the time. If you could go birding in any country outside of Cambodia, which country would you visit and why? Oh my god. Well... <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. I... <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, thank you friends from uh, <laughs> bird Cambodian Bird Photography. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. To be honest, I I have been visiting. Okay, geez, Mr. TSI or in Patrick is my top list too. How about the uh, Jermaine peacock pheasant? I have seen those birds too, but not uh, have chance to take the photograph yet. <laughs> right. Okay, George. Back to your question. Hmm. I had some experiences. Uh, traveling to some, some, some part of uh, uh, the world, such as England, sorry, I mean that, U, yeah, England, UK, something like that, and Indonesia, Malaysia, a few times, Borneo, Laos, 
Koreans, Taiwans and China, Korea, Taiwan and China. Um, I mean, any, any, any country, any, each country will be my, my favorite place. But if I have a chance this time to go to uh, the next country, I would choose Indonesia again. Because you can't really imagine how big of Indonesia, how diverse of the wildlife, and how many, many islands in those countries. Right, so I think uh, I would choose to go to see the bird of paradise if I have times and if I have invited, be invited by someone or some friend, I rather happy to go and see them. <laughs> Mr. GSI again, yes, please come with us, we see. Okay, so one day we're gonna go and find the <laughs> our English Patrick in, in Cambodia. Again, I mean, I still uh, suspect uh, the. Uh, Seima Wildlife Sanctuary, it is like a very good place to go and see the birds. Yeah. Right, uh, let me continue to uh, some uh, questions from uh, our friends. Thank you, uh, Arthur. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry for the first time, lack of the preparation, and there was some issue from the internet cutoff as well. Uh, <laughs> I can't see the TV again. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and I just got another question. Uh, what are you doing during this time and are you about to plan new uh, and exciting itineraries for the next year because of it? <laughs> Thank you for anyone that follow up, uh, SVC. Are, are you happy and you can have to share my, my life this time to have people understand about the birding situation in Cambodia as well. And yeah, I mean, back to that question, uh, I mean, most, most of us are doing a uh, lockdown and it is very strange to me because I am very, very active. I am very, very busy person. I can't say that I, would, I want to stay in one place for 24 hours. So before the COVID situation, hello, I wondered, uh, me and my team, so as my colleagues and some birding friends, we always spend some time to go birding in the, the, the forest. <laughs> yeah. So this time, even we cannot go anywhere, as the government also warns and the message from the Ministry of, of Health I mean, they, they want us to stay home and stay social distancing and try to, to be quiet until the COVID situation finished. However, we have a lot of uh, uh, research that we, that we will do and a lot of things to be prepared and, and arranged. <clears throat> so it is a very good time to arrange and, and to make other new itineraries for our clients for the upcoming season. Uh, as well, yeah. So today, uh, Mr. T, thank you very much. So today, uh, we just saw one. Hello, we just saw one. Yeah, I think uh, we are very sorry from the previous, uh, from the beginning because of the uh, internet and also because of the electricity problem. Our <coughs> Uh, our lie is, you know, going interrupted many times. Well, and during the uh, pande pandemic uh, situation of the new coronavirus, I I missed a lot of time. I I mean, I'm sorry, I miss I miss a lot of things. 
because as I, I have informed you from the previous time, I really, really want to go and see my valet. It seems like they are, you know, the thing that make me so fresh, that make me so happy anytime I, 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 I go to the forest and see them, you know. So I can say that I, I miss my giant ibis. I can't really say that not, not a single year that I never seen it. Since I became a birder from 2000 and, oh, I'm sorry, for more than 10 years, I, I have seen those birds every year. Yeah, but this time before the, the COVID-19, yeah, before March and also from like November, I, I also had uh, several times to go to Tumat Bay and so as uh, some part of uh, the, the country. And I have had some chance to see my giant ibis because I, 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 I told you before, <laughs> the call of the giant ibis before they, they fly off from, uh, from the roost, it's so amazing. It, it, it made me think like it is the prehistoric bird, the loud call, bird trumpet. Oh my God. And the rest beside the giant, giant ibis, I think uh, uh, the, the white shoulder ibis is one of my, 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 my friends as well. And of course, I do love to go to Seima because beside bird watching, I think you can also spend your time to look for the very rare and endangered primates in Cambodia. And there was, you know, the, 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 the yellow cheek crested gibbons or the palliated gibbon and the endemic black shang duke who are living inside Seima Valley Sanctuary is the best for you know the mammal watcher or the mammal lover. May hello Chai Paul. I mean I'm glad to see you. Yeah, thank you very much for watching us. How is hello, hello, yeah, hello Nick. How is it teaching local guy in village about the birds? Well, uh, since we have started our eco-tourism and we focus on birding in Cambodia, we, we, we our SVC guide, we also had spent a lot of time every year to, to provide the, uh, the, the guide training. What I mean is the local guide training in the community and we give them the capacity of uh, the bird identification or bird finding and uh, how to to uh, uh, to act with the client, uh, how you gonna host the client, and also we train them to be a very good guy when they lead the client from their village or from their eco lodge to find the birds uh, in the forest. Of course, uh, Nick. Uh, yes, indeed, we 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 do learn a lot from from each other. Everyone has their own skill, everyone has their own technique to study about birds. So when you put them together to find birds, to learn about birds, to learn about wildlife, to learn about everything inside the forest, it's great. Yes, I mean, everyone is very helpful. So sharing is the most amazing uh, tool that you, uh, you need to, uh, to deal with uh, each other. Hello, uh, some some rich up here. Yeah, very nice to see you. Uh, at the moment, if uh, you don't mind, I think I have another problem with the battery again. Let me go and uh, connect my phone to the uh, adapter. So one one mo moment, please.
Sesudai bong kesia, sesudai sun sewanari. Sorry. Back to uh, back to uh, Mr. Rotana uh, question. How do you distinguish warbler species? Yeah, we need the uh, we need the skill. <laughs> As you know, that warbler is most like the. It is one of the 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 most difficult species of bird to identify, but. If you if you know uh, the sound of their call, I think this is another the hands that will help you to identify the bird. Uh, so today, yeah, yeah, to identify so well as well. So the birding in the forest need the skill of identification and.